Hello everyone, I've got a story for you all. It's called Oscar and the Moth and it's a book about light and dark and this is Oscar the cat and he's a very curious cat and he wants to find out many things along the way. One sunny evening, Oscar lay on the warm back step. Moth was just waking up. Where does the sun go at night? Oscar asked her. It doesn't go anywhere, Moth answered. But the earth is always turning around and now it's turning slowly away from the sun. Oscar was surprised. I'm not turning round, he said. But the earth was, wasn't it? Turning away from the sun. Oh, we can't feel it, said Moth. But we can see it. When our side of the earth turns towards the sun, it gets light. And when it turns away again, it gets dark. So in the morning, there you are, you've got the sun and the sunlight. By lunchtime, it's directly overhead. And by the evening, we're turning right away and it's getting dark. Oscar sat up. Hmm, I'm cold, he shivered. It's because we're turning away from the sun, said Moth. And now we don't have the sun's light or its warmth. That's why it's almost always colder at night than during the day. What a clever moth she is. Just then, the outside lamp came on. A moth flew towards it. Well, I sleep during the day, she said. So I don't see the sun, but I love the lamp's light and its warmth. I wonder if you'll see any moths about around lights at night. Oscar looked up. He could feel the lamp's warm light on his face. Is the lamp as hot as the sun? He asked. Oh, no, said the moth. The sun is our brightest and hottest light. Are all lights hot? Oscar asked. Not all, said Moth, but many of them are. Oscar climbed off the step and he looked out at the starry sky. Moth flew down to join him. Look, it's landed on his head. You can only see the stars at night, she said but they are always shining. We can't see them in the day because of the light from the sun. Did you know that? Did you know that the stars are always there? Now, it's a little fact box down here. Let me tell you this fact about our sun. Our sun is actually a star too. It's closer to Earth than the other stars. So its light is much, much brighter for us. And it looks very, very big. Moth flew towards the street. Without the sun's light, we need other lights to help us, she said. Oscar could see the lights on an aeroplane flying at night, the street lamp and the light in the window. That's what we have in our houses, don't we? Oh, what are those things? He asked. They're dancing. Those are fireflies, Moth said. They are beetles that can make their own light. They have very, very shiny tails, don't they? And she told Oscar about quite a lot of living creatures that make their own light in their bodies. Could all of those. Did you know about all of those? Let's have a look, shall we? These are fireflies and they wait until it's dusk. That's when the sun's going really going down and it's getting dark. And they show off to the female fireflies by, fly, by um, flashing their light signals. Nice, isn't it? And these are Malaysian land snails. And can you see where their light is? Well, they have, they flash green signals to each other. Their lights, looks like their lights are under their heads, doesn't it? And the sunlight doesn't get right down into the bottom of the sea, the deepest part of the sea. So some sea creatures make their own, own um, light. If anything tries to eat the swordfish squid, it squirts 
a glowing ink cloud. That's clever, isn't it? And that dazzles the hungry fish and it allows the squid to escape. Oh, this is a crystal jellyfish here, look. And that's got a green glow when it's disturbed to frighten its enemies. And I bet some of you might recognise this fish. Maybe you've seen it in some books. It's called the anglerfish and it lives really deep down in the ocean. And it's got a big spine on its head. And on the tip of it, it comes out like this, it glows a bluey green. So when smaller fish come near it, this light shows them where the fish are and they can gobble them up. <gasps> what a clever fish. Like this one over here. Look at all those legs. <gasps> My goodness. If it's got a lot of legs, it's got to be a centipede or a millipede, hasn't it? Well, this is a Californian millipede and it's poisonous. So at night, it lights up to warn the other animals, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. <gasps> Oscar was fascinated and wished that he could glow too. Just then, Oscar noticed something swooping about. Look, Moth, there's your shadow, he called. <gasps> My body is stopping some of the light from breaching the wall, Moth said, and it leaves a dark patch. That's the same shape as me. Where's my shadow? asked Oscar. Well, if you stand up, said Moth, I think you'll see it. And there it was. Look! It seems to appear huge, doesn't it? Depending how near you are to the wall or whatever's in the way. Oscar got up and there was indeed an Oscar-shaped shadow. I bet lots of you are going to be exploring shadows over the next few days, especially if we have some sunny days. Oscar lay down again, and so did his shadow. He closed his eyes, and the dark behind his eyelids made him feel very sleepy. That's it when you're tired at night, and you're sometimes stopping yourself from going to sleep, trying to get your eyes open, don't you? As soon as you shut your eyes, you're not letting light in anymore, are you? And it's so much easier to go to sleep. <gasps> oh, is it nearly morning, he yawned. Not yet, Oscar, said Moth. Oscar didn't hear her. He was already dreaming about the bright sun and the shining stars and deep sea fishes. I wonder what you'll dream of tonight. I wonder if you'll dream of Oscar and his adventures. Have a lovely, lovely weekend, everybody. Or whenever you read this, have a lovely, lovely day. And we'll be finding more out about light and dark next week. And I'll see you on Monday for um, phonics and maths, okay? All on the website. Take care, everybody. See you soon.